any lawyer will tell you not to put something in writing that you may regret later. Any lawyer will tell you that. But when it comes to actually practicing what we preach, that can be a lot harder. And we have Exhibit A, a California judge who ignored that general rule and left quite the trail, and it will soon be used against him in a murder case. Judge Jeffrey Ferguson grew up in a military family and traveled throughout Asia as a child. He went to college and law school in California and settled down there. For the next 40 years, Ferguson had a very successful career as a lawyer and judge. He was the deputy district attorney with the Orange County, California District Attorney's Office for over 30 years. His colleagues thought well of him, and he served as the president of the local county bar association for two years. Jeffrey met Cheryl, and the couple married in 1996. In 2015, Jeffrey Ferguson became a Superior Court judge. On August 3, 2023, when Jeffrey Ferguson was 72 years old and Cheryl was 65, they'd been married for 27 years, and they set out with their son for a quiet dinner at a local restaurant. But at the restaurant, the judge and his wife Cheryl got into a fight. Prosecutors say that at some point during the dinner, Judge Ferguson pointed his finger at his wife in a manner mimicking a firearm. The son says that Judge Ferguson was intoxicated. The fight didn't end at the restaurant. When the three got home, the fight kept going. For more than an hour, prosecutors say, the couple kept arguing periodically. At some point, Cheryl said words to the effect of, why don't you point a real gun at me? According to prosecutors, he fished a 40 caliber pistol from his ankle holster and shot Cheryl in the chest. The bullet went through her chest and exited the middle of her back, winding up in a wall behind her. The son called 911 to report that his father was drinking too much, that his mom and dad had been arguing, and that his dad shot his mother. Judge Ferguson also called 911, although his statements to the dispatcher were less direct. The dispatcher asked if Judge Ferguson had shot his wife, and he said he didn't want to talk about it, but that she needed paramedics. The son tried to stabilize his mother, and paramedics stepped in as soon as they arrived, but it was too late. Cheryl died. The judge did exactly what every lawyer has told his client not to do. He talked and he texted, and the people around him took what he said as a confession. Within minutes of Cheryl's shooting, the judge sent a strange, especially for a lawyer or a judge, text to his court clerk and bailiff. He said, I just lost it. I just shot my wife. I won't be in tomorrow. I will be in custody. I'm so sorry. It was so strange that the bailiff and the clerk said they assumed it was a joke, which frankly is an odd reaction no matter how you slice it. Who sends a text telling you they just shot their wife as a joke? The two sides are going to have very different interpretations of this text. Judge Ferguson's team probably will insist that Judge Ferguson was showing a remarkable commitment to his job. Even as he was dealing with this overwhelming circumstance, he was thinking about the job itself and the people he worked with. The prosecution probably will argue that it was remarkably cold, that in the middle of emotional circumstances, he was thinking about his job and status as a judge and didn't even mention any sort of emotional reaction to the death of his wife. They also may argue that the text shows he was sober enough to think through the consequences that were going to result from what he did, and he figured what he had done was going to mean he would still be in custody by the next day. It's also a little surprising that Judge Ferguson admitted in writing to court personnel that he shot his wife and that he expects to be in custody for the foreseeable future. If he had shot his wife accidentally, he might not have been jailed at all, much less by the next day. When officers arrived on the scene, they said that Judge Ferguson was slurring his words and that he reeked of alcohol. They tested the judge for alcohol, but for some reason, the blood was not drawn until seven hours after the shooting. Even at that time, his blood alcohol was 0.06, not far below the 0.08 that is legally drunk in many jurisdictions. He was still wearing the empty ankle holster. The police said that Judge Ferguson also voluntarily made comments that officers felt showed he was acknowledging culpability. In other words, acknowledging that he was guilty. Things like, 
oh man, I can't believe I did this. What an blank I am. And I guess I'm done for a while. He asked officers to shoot him, which they did not do. The son told investigators that he had seen his parents fight many times, but never had he seen one of the fights turn violent. He admitted his dad tends to be more heated when he drinks. The son said that his mother had told him the judge had threatened suicide one time, but Cheryl was able to talk the judge out of it. On another occasion, Judge Ferguson was alone in a bathroom when a gun discharged. The son understood this was simply an accident and not an attempt to harm himself. Other than these two incidents, Judge Ferguson had no history of attempts. Authorities seized 47 weapons and 26,000 rounds of ammunition from Judge Ferguson's home. The weapons were legally owned. And while that's a lot, I guess we have to put it into perspective given that authorities took more than 200 firearms from the home of Rhett C. Yerman, who was accused of three of the Long Island serial killer murders. A 48th weapon was apparently found by Ferguson's defense lawyer, who turned it over to police. And in an odd twist, a 49th weapon seems to be missing. Neither the defense counsel nor law enforcement have been able to find one particular 22 caliber rifle that is registered to Judge Ferguson. Meanwhile, prosecutors have charged Judge Ferguson with one felony count of murder, one felony enhancement of personal use of a firearm, one felony enhancement of discharge of a firearm causing great bodily injury and death. If the judge is convicted on all three counts, his maximum sentence would be 40 years to life. For now, Judge Ferguson is out on $1 million bail. Prosecutors ask that Judge Ferguson avoid alcohol altogether and limit contact with his son to prevent any degree of risk or undue influence upon the son. Judge Ferguson has pleaded not guilty. His attorneys have said that Cheryl's death was a tragedy and an accident and nothing more. The question is whether that argument will be too little and too late. Local news stations interviewed lawyers and even defendants who had appeared before Judge Ferguson. They spoke highly of Judge Ferguson and were shocked at the turn of events. One said Ferguson had been kind to her when she was before him and really seemed to understand her. I think this case is super sad. It sounds like this was a man who had done a great deal of good in his life and all of those years of good had been overshadowed by a single act in a single minute. The whole thing is a tragedy. If you like hearing about the legal cases that are in the news, hit the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.